Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is a new open world entry in Ubisoft's portfolio. While many of its mechanics will feel familiar to players of the publisher's other titles, the game also tries some new and surprising ideas, a number of which can take some time to get good at while playing. After spending time with the game over the last week, here are 14 things we wish we knew before jumping into Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. The western frontier of Pandora is a massive open world, and while it's extremely fun to explore on foot, marveling at its breathtaking sights, it can be equally as enjoyable to traverse on your Ikran. The full scope of the moon's luscious landscape laid before you as you soar through the skies. Flying also makes getting around a lot faster, but you won't bond with your mountain banshee until a couple of hours into playing the game. As such, we recommend focusing on main story missions at least until reaching the narrative beat where you bond with your Ikran. You will probably rack up a number of side quests on your journey to this point, but you'll still be around the same level as them after unlocking your mount. Once you've bonded with your Ikran, you'll be able to unlock Ancestor skills much more easily. Ancestor skills, unlike your basic skills that you obtain with traditional skill points, require you to connect with Awa, the Na'vi's deity, at specific locations on the game map. Each of them offers a key gameplay mechanic that you're absolutely going to want, such as the ability to rip RDA soldiers from their amp suits, or the ability to reduce damage from a fall by immediately kicking into a slide. The first ancestor skill, a double jump, is unlocked as part of a very early story beat, but once the full western frontier opens up to you after that, you are free to unlock more at any time, and we recommend unlocking them as soon as possible. To find them on the map, you simply need to click on the ancestor skill button within the skills tab, highlight the skill you wish to unlock with the cursor, and hit the find on map button. This will show you exactly where you need to go. In the game's starting area, the King Law Forest, there are four additional ancestor skills that can be unlocked, with the rest becoming available once you reach the game's additional biomes, the Upper Plains, and Clouded Forest, which open up at specific narrative beats. Ancestor skills also provide two skill points for each one you unlock, so they're a great way to upgrade your Na'vi's basic skills quickly as well. Speaking of your basic skills, Frontiers of Pandora's skill tree is divided into five different sections that focus on health, offense, stealth, crafting, and mounts. That last one you unlock once you bond with your Ikran, another reason to get to that moment as quickly as possible. As you upgrade more of the skill trees, additional skills require more points to unlock, and once you've fully completed a skill tree, you can unlock a mastery skill in that category. There are skills further into each of the trees that are absolutely more useful more frequently than some of the earlier ones, so as such, don't feel compelled to unlock all the one-point skills before moving on to the two-point skills, then three, etc. As mentioned before, if you want to upgrade your Na'vi as quickly as possible, the best way to do so is to unlock all the ancestor skills you can. The Na'vi are 10 foot tall cat leg humanoids, and just like in the movies, are incredibly agile and dexterous. And just like in the movies, the world is extremely versatile and varied. It's not like Assassin's Creed, where structures are built specifically to accommodate the player character and provide precise points to latch onto and jump off from. That being said, you are far more capable than you might think. A cliffside laid before you that initially looks insurmountable is usually pretty traversable. You'll get the hang of it as you play, and will get better at judging what you can and can't use to get around, but definitely go for it rather than playing it safe. The world of Pandora is alive at all times, with much of the flora around you altering gameplay as you move through its biomes. Mist blooms, when run through, will grant the player a speed boost, a white vignette forming around the screen to indicate the temporary momentum increase. Giant roots that cut through the landscape are usually littered with these plants, allowing for quick access to your next destination. These roots are also dotted with plants that provide natural zip lines up to them, so if you pass by one, but are nowhere near its beginning or end, there should be a way to get up to it nearby. To keep your momentum going, you can also begin to press the grab vine button before the game has even prompted you, allowing you to flow from a dead sprint right into a zip line up and back into a sprint again. Keep an eye out for large fungi as well. They can either propel you into the air or provide a damage negating cushion from a fall. And yes, just like Neytiri demonstrates in the first Avatar movie, plants with extremely large leaves can also be used to help break your fall if you jump from a great height. And if you end up in water, know that you can't jump out of it. You have to find a spot that you can clamber out from. 
Navi are not only fast but strong, and can very quickly take down not only enemy soldiers but powerful amp suits as well. That being said, what a Navi has in offense it lacks in defense, and being out in the open in the middle of a firefight, even for a few seconds, can quickly end your journey. As such, you want to be stealthy when you can, and if you alert an RDA base, make sure to always be moving, trying to pick off a few enemies at a time. Weapons exist on a radial menu, but you can switch between your current and previous weapon by tapping either triangle or Y on your controller. Holding that button can then also holster your weapon. You can heal mid-battle by eating Dapafet pods, which you can find on plants growing near sources of water all throughout the western frontier. You can initially only stock two pods at a time, that number increasing with specific skills you can unlock. What makes this a little more difficult is that when engaging with RDA bases, the surrounding area is polluted, and therefore, Dapper Fet pods are unobtainable nearby until the RDA base is taken down. So always make sure to stock up when you have the opportunity. If you stumble upon an RDA base under without any Dapper Fet pods, however, there will be a few first aid kits located at the base which you can use to restock your health satchel as well. You can also heal by eating food, which we'll get to further in detail shortly. It's not as quick as healing by dipping into your health satchel as you need to navigate a radial menu compared to simply pressing on the D-pad, but in a pinch, don't be afraid to dip into your food reserves, you will always have more than enough resources to cook more. Considering all this, we recommend investing early in the memory of the survivor skill tree, aka the health skill tree, to increase your base health and the size of your health satchel. Another way to increase your base health is with Bellspring plants, which can be found all around Pandora, along with other key interactable items. Anytime you near one of these important features, a white splotch will appear on the screen. As you move around, this white splotch will change position, pointing in the direction you need to face in order to find what it's highlighting. The white splotch will then begin to spread into a circle as your orientation corrects. Once you have formed the circle, you can then use your Navi vision to try and precisely pinpoint the fixture's location, the white of the circle pooling, in a specific spot if you overshoot in any direction. This specific notification will appear for Bell Springs, which upgrade your base health, Tarsu Saplings, which provide you skill points, and a myriad of different interactable world elements. Just know that if that white splotch appears, you're going to want to track down what it's directing you toward. Of course, these are not the only things you can interact with in the Western Frontier, as there are a ton of plant and animal parts to loot. However, things work a little differently in Pandora. The quality of what you harvest depends on a couple of factors, the time of day and weather conditions for flora, and how clean of a kill for fauna. Flora can also be deemed pristine or not, depending on how you remove it from the environment. When playing with a controller, interacting with a plant will ask you to hold down the right trigger slightly. You'll then feel rumble, and you can point the angle with which you you plan to remove the item with the left thumbstick. When you don't feel any more rumble, you are able to remove the plant cleanly by fully depressing on the right trigger and continuing to hold the left thumbstick in the correct direction. This will offer a pristine item, increasing its quality and in turn improving whatever you end up crafting or cooking with it. While the game explains all this to you, what it doesn't explain is that the pull direction will be the same for every piece of similar flora. For example, all night leaf branches pull to the left and all lionberry fibers pull downward. If you want, you can change how specific you need to be with your inputs in order to remove the plant, and you can turn it off altogether in the settings, making the process automatic, but you then remove the ability to get a performance bonus if you go this route. Lastly, don't feel compelled to loot everything you see in the game. As a Na'vi, you have a great respect for the world, and you're incentivized to not take something simply because you can. Not only is this done by limiting how much you can carry at once, but acquiring a certain quality of loot under optimal conditions will be required at points to craft specific items or cook a specific meal. Items in your inventory that are necessary for a specific purpose will have a leaf-like icon next to them. While you can increase your inventory space through skill tree upgrades, the increases are minimal, so only take something if you truly think you need it. Instead of simply dropping any unnecessary items in order to make space, you're better off donating them to one of the various clans, as providing them with resources you don't have a need for will increase your clan reputation. And if you need to wait for weather conditions or the time of day to be different before acquiring an item, you can pass the time by waiting by any campfire. 
As previously mentioned, reputation with the clans is an important part of the game, as some of the best items and resources can be accessed via clan vendors without the need for foraging, crafting, or cooking. There are numerous ways to earn reputation with the clans that you will learn of as you play the game, but what the game doesn't explain is that clan reputation are not actually levels you achieve, but a currency you spend. As you increase your reputation, the clan reputation indicator will fill up, unlocking new items from the different Navi vendors as as it does. However, when you choose an item from those vendors, it reduces your reputation by whatever amount those items cost. So much like looting, be selective when using clan reputation. Those vendors, however, will often have gifts to offer you or designs and recipes for use in crafting and cooking. So make sure to frequently check in with them even if you don't plan on spending any clan reputation. One situation you should feel free to scavenge as much as possible is when you're at a Navi base camp or resistance HQ. At these locations, there are storage containers and baskets littered throughout that frequently restock up on items such as stun grenades and ammunition. So every time you return to one of these locations, make sure to do some light pillaging to prepare for your next venture into the wilds. While out in the wild, you will often come across other Na'vi, either at camps or just doing their thing in the middle of the jungle. If the game prompts you to speak to them, do so. If the prompt has a leaf icon, it'll be a side quest. But even if it doesn't, the Na'vi you speak to is likely to either gift you some resources or inform you of something nearby, adding its location to the map. Both side quests and main quests will be assigned a combat rank, indicating whether you are equipped to handle it or not. Your combat rank is displayed in the menus and will increase based on the number of skill points you've acquired and the gear you have equipped. If an item has an exclamation point under it in your inventory, it'll lower your combat rank. And if every item in a category has an exclamation point, you'll know that's a piece of gear you'll want to focus on crafting or acquiring a better version of. If you pre-ordered the game or picked up its digital or ultimate editions, you'll have some items all ready to equip your Navi and Ikran with. However, those items are not automatically in your inventory when you jump into the game. To acquire those items, you need to check your mail. You can find that by going to the character tab in the menu, selecting the pouch, and then highlighting the very bottom option, which is mail. All the items are in there waiting for you to receive them. One of the unique elements that Frontiers of Pandora brings to the games in comparison to the movies is a hacking tool, allowing you to interface with enemy amp suits, computers, locked crates, and even RDA bases themselves. If you want to approach a situation with the utmost stealth, you'll want to store your hacks rather than executing them immediately. If you hack a piece of RDA machinery, it'll notify the base that something is amiss, and the RDA will begin searching for you. If you can get to each piece of machinery you need to hack, and store them before executing them all at once, RDA at the base won't know something's wrong before it's too late. The hacking tool also has a useful indicator that can help you spot things that you can hack that might be hidden. With the hacking tool equipped, a long rectangular reticle will appear on the screen. As you begin to point the tool in the right direction, this reticle will slowly morph into a circle, fully doing so when you are close to and directly pointed at what you need to hack. Numerous missions in Frontiers of Pandora will require you to do a bit of detective work, connecting one element in an area to another in order to piece together what's happened before you arrived. Sometimes locating the clues can be frustrating, and you can sometimes find yourself wandering around in circles trying to find them. Keep an eye out for the Inside Quest Area marker at the top of the screen. If that disappears, you'll know you won't find what you're looking for where you're currently searching. And that's everything we wish we knew before playing Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. We hope these tips help you navigate the dangerous and beautiful Western Frontier. For more on the game, including our review, check it out right here on GameSpot.